Thanks, everyone. Uh, this is my second NASIS and my first as a presenter, so I appreciate all of your attention. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about data-driven styling in Mapbox Studio. Uh, particularly, going to hit on each of these points, why data-driven styling, some of the latest data-driven features with Mapbox, some examples that implement these features, and also, finally, what's next. So Mapbox, I'm currently a product designer and a front end developer at Mapbox, which is a location platform for developers. At Mapbox, I work on map design and tools for map design. So Mapbox provides designers and developers with the building blocks to bring maps and location to their applications. These are just a few of the beautiful and assuredly different from each other uh, maps made by some of my colleagues at Mapbox. These maps were all made using Mapbox Studio, which is our design application for making creative custom vector maps. Studio is a free web-based tool and gives you full con design control of the entire map down to street level. Everything that uh, you see on this map, you can click and style. So when you're designing a map in Studio, you're designing a global map, um, a map of the whole world that's meant to be used at all zoom levels. And as a designer, this means that you have to give up some control uh, and knowledge of sort of like the way that your viewer is using the map. They could be looking at your map at any place in the world. So as a result, we can't really make all decisions about design manually. It's critical to use data to help us make design decisions that are comprehensive and wide reaching. So today I'm going to be talking about some of the new features uh, with respect to data-driven styling that give you control and choice when it, more control and choice when it comes to styling your map. And when I say data-driven styling, just to give a more specific definition to this phrase, um, I mean styling spatial data based on its properties. So some examples of this, you might want to change the color of a state polygon based on the population of that state. Uh, you might want to display every country's label in that country's own primary language. Or you might determine the width of a road based on that road's classification. Uh, this has been possible with Mapbox since 2016. Um, that was when we introduced this first implementation of data-driven styling. So the implementation goes something like this. You, for a style property, um, in this case fill color, you input a data field and output your desired value. So say we have land use and we know the class of this particular feature is a park, so we want to make it green. If the class of this feature is snow, we'd want to make it white. The same thing goes for zoom-based styling at this time. So you input a zoom level and you output the desired style property at that stop. So in this case, text size. This method was great for creating dynamic styles, but we found that the in and out format did have some limitations. What if your data is not exactly in the format you'd like it to be? What if you want to style using multiple data properties? So in response to some of these challenges and questions we had, we've introduced a new way to think about dynamic styling expressions. So expressions are basically formulas for computing style properties and filters. Um, the, the key features are as follows. So as I said, you can use one or multiple data properties to uh, style a feature. You can have conditional logic, so sort of if-else logic uh, to decide how to style features. We have more interpolation types. So for example, you can use a cubic Bezier curve to set a zoom-based expression. Uh, we have math and string operations. So you might want to use a math operation if you, have, if you want to do a unit conversion. You, um, you want to change your elevation from feet to meters, for instance. And you might want to do string operations if, say, you want to concatenate um, two different languages together on a label to create a bilingual map. And finally, some, one of the exciting things about expressions is that it's extensible. We can continue to add new operations to support new features. So this gets at one of the biggest benefits of expressions. That is, expressions are flexible, allowing you to get really precise about your design intent. 
The abundance of new options enable you to make more deci decisions at the presentation, the style level, rather than at the preparation, the data level. So let's look at an example. Um, taking a data set of populated places from natural earth, this is not the first time that we've seen this data set today, which is cool. Um, I want to add some circles to my map and I want to scale them by population. So the style property we have for setting the size of circles in MapboxGL is uh, circle radius. But what I really want to do is scale the, the area of the circle um, since this is really how we perceive the, the circle's visual size. So using expressions, um, using a little math with expressions, I can write a formula for more accurately scaled circles. Um, so this is just an isolated example of what we want to achieve here. On the top um, is an example of a radius with a direct relationship to population. And on the bottom, I'm using the formula for circle area, which is pi r squared, and then isolating radius uh, in order to size the circle by population. So we have radius as the square root of population divided by pi. Um, that's just the circle area formula sort of inside out. Um, so yeah, the difference as you can see is that uh, radius scales linearly while area scales uh, quadratically. So um, it's not like a totally accurate visualization to simply set population to radius. Um, as you see in the, the top example, there's a more dramatic difference between the, uh, the cities with lower population versus the cities with a higher population. Um, so the bottom is the effect that we're trying to achieve. So let's see what this looks like on the map. Um, in Studio, we have this new formula mode that basically allows us to write expressions uh, with math and string operations. Um, so as you see, this is uh, just an example, and I've blown up the actual formula on the bottom. Um, we have these tokens for assembling expressions. Um, so as you see, I'm using this formula that I just described, uh, square root of population divided by pi. Um, and the value of population will dynamically scale the circle. Um, and you see there's this moment where like there's green overtaking the screen, and basically what's happening there is that as I'm setting circles to population size, um, they're far too big, so I'm just scaling them down uh, by dividing with a constant. Um, so yeah, this is uh, happening right in Mapbox Studio. And what is really fun, I think, about this is that there's kind of this instant feedback loop with experimenting with expressions right in Studio. Um, so it makes it possible to play and prototype with data-driven styling to get the results that you're looking for. And uh, another example here, with expressions for the first time, uh, we're bringing data-driven styling to our core Mapbox styles. Expressions allow us to add more sophisticated, nuanced details to the map. Um, so just giving a sneak peek of uh, what's coming with Mapbox Streets, which is one of our core styles, it's a, a general purpose map. Uh, Nat referred to it earlier today. Um, so on the left, we have our current version of Streets, Streets version 10. And on the right uh, is the in-progress version, uh, Streets v11. And Streets v11 on the right is starting to incorporate expressions. So uh, just focusing particularly on the city labels, if you notice, uh, there's a slight difference in icon styling. So um, on the left, we have just this normal circle, and on the right, we have this fancy bordered circle. Um, and if you also look around the rest of the map, you might notice that larger cities like Krakow get a slightly larger icon than nearby cities like Ostrava um, at the top. So we do this by writing an expression uh, with two data fields that uh, is combined with conditional logic. So this is kind of, you know, combining two of the new advantages of expressions. So this is how the expression is represented in Studio. Earlier we saw kind of like a more raw format with formula mode, but um, Studio kind of gives you this structure for working with expressions of a, uh, a common format. And you can edit each of these conditions individually and add more as needed. So what's happening with this expression is that uh, we're deciding that capitals 
uh, national capitals, which are um, given uh, the number two, get this special border dot. Otherwise, we use symbol rank to decide what icon we want to use. And uh, these, these particular data fields are coming from the new Mapbox Streets V8 tile set. Um, and we've, we've kind of provided these data fields actually uh, really, um, really like it's been a collaboration with our data teams uh, to, to create a data layer that is ready and uh, optimized to be styled. So that's another sort of exciting development for us with data-driven styling is that um, we, can, we can really sort of like create, um, create a data layer that uh, is, is optimized for these little design details as you see here. So I've just shown a few examples of how to use expressions to power your map styles. The challenge with expressions, however, is knowing when and how to assemble them with so many possibilities available. So the map design teams at Mapbox are currently working on a new feature that packages up layers into what we're calling components, um, which are pre-configured with uh, some expressions that uh, are used in common map design patterns. So with each component, uh, you'll have control over the options that matter without having to write expressions from scratch. So in this example here, we're looking at a hypothetical place label component that is controlling labels of things like neighborhoods um, and that sort of thing. So we have this uh, single slider for label density and the, uh, the value of this slider is basically being inserted into these more complex expressions that you're seeing below. Um, both represented as you see it in Studio and then below as you see it in um, Mapbox GL. So yeah, basically uh, you, you uh, get um, this single control that enables you to make decisions without really having to know how to author expressions and how to um, you know, work with this um, very complex format. But um, you know, hopefully it, it kind of engages you with the possibilities of data-driven styling in a new way. So we're excited to introduce this feature in the next few months and see what Studio users will make with them. Um, but until then, if you'd like to learn more about expressions or if you're already using them to make cool maps and data visualizations, uh, please say hello uh, and thank you for your time. <laughs>